What's up, what? I mean, what an appropriate shirt for you to wear. Oh, yeah, all the time, every Sunday. But it's fucking saucy, yo. A couple things I want to address now. Like, let's figure out a couple of things right. here. I want to. I was telling Egg before, basically, so how this is going to work is see how like, I have the computer and the TV here. I'm going to, I want to have you have like a mic, but I only want you to like speak when you're like addressed. Like, you know what I mean? Speak when spoken like, to. Not to, not to like I, come I, off I, as like I, a dick, I, but like, I know what you're saying. I don't want you just like randomly chiming in while we're like talking because you're like not on camera and all of a sudden like a voice just pops in. I want to be like, like, oh, like, what'd you think about that, Ike? Yeah. Two shows a week. Well, that that, that, that was the original plan, dude. Uh, I was gonna originally Plus do week. three, but I figured let's go two and work our way up into yeah, it. Could, yeah. uh, originally, so I want to do Monday, Thursday, and if we do include a, a third day, it'd be Saturday, so it'd be Friday nights filming. Oh, I got a fart. That's right. That's your chair. You can fart it up. All you want. I push that one. Don't don't shit in it. I actually think like, that would be a great start to an episode. Like, there. <laughs> <laughs> Like, Dude, this is, that's what I'm talking about. Thanks, man. Um, I basically went over everything for you. Um, you just show the fuck up. You'll be good. Uh, you no, know, I, I am capable of doing things. Well, not te so not technical, not technical. Oh, that's what I want to do. That's the last thing too. Do you have your phone set up? How are you going to hear the person on the phone? That's the one thing we have to figure out. Normally, when we do this, you won't be in the room with us. Like we're going to be calling someone. Like Nick would be in New York City. He won't be here, so we won't hear him on the phone. And you know what I mean? Uh, Hello. Yeah, I yeah, I hear the phone conversation. What do you mean? What do you mean? You hear, you hear, you hear, you hear, you hear, you hear yourself? Well, no. Well, no, because the, no, don't say no. You're the one who has to go through the phone here. I can hear a phone conversation through it right now. That's what I'm trying. Can you hear me, to hear. Janice? Yeah, we can't hear you. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out now. What to do? If we're having Nick call us in, Nick's phone won't be. Yeah, so you're gonna have the same problem if your phone's connected to it and you're talking to them. Same right? thing. Yeah, it doesn't work. Huh? But that's what I'm saying. We have to figure. We can't call the phone from your phone. So, like, if my phone's hooked so up to it, that? Nick would call me. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't think you're understanding what I'm saying. No, you're not understanding. I'm your phone. I know my phone's not gonna be hooked can up. Please, please listen to like. Regardless, of the, I'm the one who's fucking doing this. We no, I about. understand, but he knows more about the No, he doesn't. I watched all the videos. He didn't watch any of the videos I sent him. It doesn't My phone has to be hooked up to it. Yes. Your phone will be hooked up to it. And then we'll have the same problem. That I'll but we don't it. know that yet because we have to test it. But how are you going to hear the person? Okay. The That's person the is not going to be here. Yes, I know that. I know. And I'll be able to hear them through the phone. Which yes. Is what just which happened. we have to figure out how. Yeah. But with your phone, it's not gonna. It, we can't do it. We can't test it that way. What are you're fucked up? How? I literally just said the same fucking thing to you. I have to hook my phone up to. That's all I'm saying. I don't get the problem. You're all right. We'll hook your phone up to it, and we'll see if it works. Well, we can tr we can figure out from there how it works. Okay. So I can't hear you, but you can hear him, right? Yes. All right. That is exactly what I was saying. Yes, but now we can figure out how to do it. Is what I'm talking Matt, about. It would have been the same thing. No, it's not, because my phone is the one hooked up to it and calling from it. How is it that I, I fucking, I no, you're not you're not getting it. Listen, you're not getting it. You know, you guys aren't getting it. Listen, I, I, how is it that I figured it out? Holy shit! Said, Shut what? up! I'll fucking cancel this whole thing right now. No, yeah, it's true. All, uh, no offense. It's not. Even I, even okay. I figured that. Here's out. the thing, though. I watched all the videos on it. Neither of you did. So shut up. That's not what you're Listen, saying. we're gonna have arguments like this over some dumb shit trying to fucking set this up, I'll just do the whole show by myself. I'll throw that fucking chair out, I'll move the chair in the center, and I'll do the show by Adam's myself. Views. Adam's Adam's views. I don't get this. Adam's views. Like, I just put uh, all this uh, shit uh, together uh, to have you guys bitch at uh, me right now, uh, I'm uh, not gonna uh, deal with uh, it. Uh, I'm yelling, just talk to no, people no, no, like no. normal human beings. I, just relax. No, no, no. I said I need to switch to you. No, 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 you don't need to. I want to switch it so I can figure it out from my phone. I can't figure it out from Ike's phone, but it's over there. The situation we just had ourselves in wouldn't be that, like, the right. person wouldn't be calling hooked up. Like, it, okay. You know what I'm saying? We would be calling them, and we would still have the same problem of not being able to. And now them. we can figure it out, which is what I'm trying to do for my, like, you guys literally took what I did and just twisted it into something I know, that made but we no sense. I could have figured it out without doing the six other steps of removing my phone and putting your phone on it. And then we could have just attached your phone and then knew how to do it already. That's what I was trying to get at. Yeah, but why not just figure it out from my phone when I have an Apple and you have a Samsung and it could be different. All right, so when we do phone calls, in order to be able to hear the person calling, we're going to have to have an external speaker. Yeah. Okay, okay great. Perfect. Hello? 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 H
Can I hang up? Can yeah, I come you out? can hang up. Yes. You yeah. sure? Yeah, go fuck yourself. Yeah, I already hung up. Actually, well, yeah, it's... I'm so fucked. That's only for us to be able to hear and have a conversation. Everything's being recorded through there. Wait, do we figure it out? Yeah. The best moment of the day, uh, by far, Justin Thomas on the fifth hole. Dustin Johnson. No, no. Or was it, was it, it was jo- Justin oh, yeah, Thomas. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Justin I, I, Thomas I on the fifth hole. This was for birdie. He goes to putt the ball and. He's, just, got, a, he's got a good look at it, too. I mean, dude. He's got a good look. Justin this looks Thomas like it's going in. His excellent approach shot ran all the way toward the back of the green for birdie. Dude, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Well. <laughs> That's a putter throw right there. Justin but like, you hear what he that's says? That's a putter throw. That's... Ran all the way toward the back of the green for birdie. Oh, Dude, it's so painful. You gotta be fucking, you gotta be fucking like, kidding stop me. Showing it. Stop showing it. It's me. just one of those things where, like, when I watched it, I related to it. Yeah. I, well, felt, I felt that because me as a common man golfer, to see a professional have one rim out badly, and yeah. then fucking curse. Yeah. I loved it. It's an emergency you situation. You porn. No one downloads porn. I think you're that guy that watches porn with jeans on. No, I don't even wear jeans. No, no, no. I think you watch porn with jeans on because... Like to you, suppress my boner? No, because you just want to watch the story. I'm a 14 tabs open kind of guy <laughs> with all my favorite scenes. Like, I watch all of them and then, like, I get to, like, the, the best part of each video. And then it's just, like, roulette. Like, whatever happens, happens. I don't know it's which one I'm going to finish what, it's to. It's what it is. But it's what it is. one of them's getting it. Well, if you were the real GM, you'd be fired already. Listen, motherfucker, I had it was a keeper league. I had Jimmy Graham in the tenth, DeAndre Hopkins in the eleventh, and uh Danny Gordon. Gordon. You're on speaker, speaker mode. My, my wife's in the car. What's cracking, big dokes? <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. This is the Fade the Public podcast. Make sure you are following the Fade the Public YouTube channel. As well as the actual podcast in the iTunes store, Spotify store, Subliminal Poor, Subliminal Poor, all the stores. Go buy all our shit. Animals House premieres next week, so make sure you Huge. are following the Fade the Public YouTube keep channel up, keep for up. that. Yeah, that was the vlog you just saw. It was a disaster. It was an absolute disaster. Love the passion out of you, though. Animal was, uh, Animal was, oh, yeah. was angry. Makes me know he wants it. Angry. He wants it bad. He will make yeah. it work at any and expense. I, I did what I do best, and I... No, listen. I blindly... <laughs> you blindly sided with Ike on an issue you knew nothing about, he knew nothing about, and I was very upset about Welcome that. Welcome to the internet in 2020, except it's snacks in real life. Yeah. woo What are we talking about today, Mr. Animal? All right, so show guts, we got a little... We want to talk about this Alvin Kamara quote where he tore up his knee. Need to dive into that a little bit more. Hopefully, Dr. Jesse Morse will be coming out with a video soon. He said he would, so we'll see about that. We're going to be talking about it. our issue with... The tight end premium and Yahoo Fantasy Football. We've, we've got some issues with our with our big money league, and it's a scoring it's change that we made. Yeah. yeah, if you watched our league meeting last week, if you didn't, go check that out. We have our, our, our big money league in which we you know have our annual summer meeting, and we discuss rule changes. We made a change, and we go back to the certain platform, which we'll get into, and uh, we can't actually physically implement it because they don't fucking allow it. So I'm going to air my grievances and start some beef with some big, big, uh, listen, big pharma and big fantasy. After Yahoo. Yeah. Big fantasy, big pharma. We're here for all the fucking beef. Put a biscuit on a patty. Let's go. And then uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Antonio Gibson, whether he's a buy, sell, hold. What do you want to do with him just because of the recent news with Darius Geis being cut? And then we're going to sum it up. Actually, no, I'm sorry. We're going to do some guys we love for fantasy football. We're going to give you three each. And then we're going to sum it up with a herd of goats. Heard. Uneasy feelings. The, yeah. the guts of this show is going to be the guys that we love in fantasy this year. Yes. It's a little different than last summer because last summer we had been talking about fantasy pretty much nonstop in every episode. This summer, obviously, our content has pivoted a little bit more to the personality side of the brand and the lifestyle side of things. And it's cool because we already kind of knew. I mean, we're in the same leagues together. And we knew last year, like, who we liked. So we kind of had to shift our targets and shit. And it was kind of annoying drafting together based on having talking together. It did. It sucked. Now we don't really time. know who we like. So yeah, like, I, have no, I had no idea who you guys were going to put on the list. So today we'll be talking about three dudes that we love in <sighs> fantasy this year separately. Three apiece. And then we got our herd of goats. Uneasy feelings. Herd. Herd. I'm excited for this app. We got a jam, jam-packed piece of content slapping you in the face today. Make sure if you enjoy it, hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Cheers. Scott. You know what to do. Hit the motherfucking intro.
Dana Gordon. <laughs> that was technically an AM beer. <laughs> it's noon right now, but when we cracked it, it was 11.58 a.m. Just want to put that on the Huge. record. Nothing better than an AM beer on a Tuesday. What a fucking life. No. <laughs> what, what a fucking life we live. All right, all right, all right. Animal. Fucking Shabazz. All right, let's get into this. Uh, Shabazz Napier. This What's little... that guy doing? Huh? Shabazz Napier. Yeah, he was a basketball player. Yeah, where is he? UConn, right? Uh, yes. Savage. One with Kevin Ollie, I believe, right? Yes. Whatever. Go. All right, so let's get into this little piece of information about Alvin Kamara. So the, the, the headline is it's from uh, Nick Underhill. Great Saints beat reporter, by the way. Really good if you don't follow him. Got a good name, too. Best in the game. So it says, Just saying. the injury did not require surgery. Instead, the 25-year-old rehabbed throughout the offseason and claims to be healthy now. Kamara was knowingly playing through injury, avoiding a tackle every 7.3 touches from week 10 on, compared to every 3.1 touches prior to his leg injury. So, like, we already we saw something wrong with him on the field. We didn't know exactly what we, we thought. We thought it was, it was high a high ankle sprain, sprain which, would, which would make sense given the down fall of his elusiveness and whatnot, like you said, very, very elusive in the beginning of the year. We want to talk about something, you know, we're talking about avoiding, and something Snacks was avoiding coming into this episode was <laughs> the date from last week. <laughs> Snacks, how'd your date go last Great. week? The best ever. The people want, best ever? The best ever. When's the wedding? Uh, it's going to be a really good vlog. Well, are we going to vlog all our weddings? Like, fuck, that, like, know, that's what I, my I life like is up to at this point, like, right? Gonna have a, it's called the wedding photographer. Like they're good, but listen, it's a vlog. Are we like hiring Ike? <laughs> like do photography, <laughs> yeah. but make it video. Uh, yeah. But you can't eat, you can't do anything. Just take care of this. By the way, is that TV bothering you guys downstairs? I didn't notice. Uh, I didn't notice. Until you I actually kind of like the energy bitch. from it, to be honest. That's fine. I was just just wondering. All yeah. right. Anyways, uh, Snacks' date went great. The wedding is going to yes. be soon. Uh, Twenty twenty two. Stay out. Stay stay looking out for the vlog. Alvin Kamara. Yeah. So, so you're concerned. One thing here I'm reading that makes me concerned is, and listen, these guys word things differently, so you don't know if it's true, but assuming he's 100% for the regular season after foregoing surgery, which makes it sound like he should have had a surgery and it was like, nah, I'll rehab instead. And it just, so I don't know the details on the injury. This is the big part of the Kamara thing. I'm thinking back to Ryan Tannehill when he had a partially torn ACL. He opted to rehab, not get surgery, ticking time bomb, stepped on the field, Two lose ACL. Two positions, too. What do you mean? One's a quarterback, one's a running back. Well, One running back's going to be pivoting. and using That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, know. Exactly. Has, I know you're not used to it, but he's actually siding with you. Yeah, I know. no. I I just he takes things. everything as a defensive I, I, I know, I know. Oh, if I battleship to, fucking you, everything nukes that comes out of my mouth, <laughs> my you guys shut down. Up, right? I agree with you. I am very concerned about this. This is something that just pops okay, up. So this pops up. In the middle of August, when we have a month away from the football season, but it didn't pop up. It just happened to come up in the conversation that he was in. It wasn't like, oh, this is a lot I'm more serious than than. But it wasn't a like, ankle but it wasn't though. like, oh, I'm still dealing with the no. the, ace, the torn whatever. Here's yeah. here's my. I thing don't with believe it. any any player. Here's, though, so that's me my either. They're all. I'm 100 percent good to go. I'm right. strongest as ever. Right. Here, here's Strong my shit. thing with it. One, I've I've talked to a, a few separate guys like doctors, PTs in the industry at this point, and they're not concerned. They said they've seen the rehab videos and he he looks full go and ready to go. So I will take their word for it. The other thing is this: like they, they seem in pads. When a when a player says when a it's like such a difference. What I mean, cutting wise, it doesn't really matter about the pads. Here's here's my thing. Tearing, we need to figure out what he tore because, like, listen, if he tore his ACL, I don't think he would have played all of the games afterwards. I don't think he could no. physically do that. If he did something to like, he could have like sprained his MCL or a minor tear, and that's what dudes like Joe Mixon missed like two weeks sprained his MCL with that. Well, he did miss. Didn't he miss two weeks, Kamara? Right, that's what I'm saying. Like it was that's, after that. That's what I think it was more... It's more likely that it was something with the MCL or, or non-ACL related, which is usually two to four. We, we, see, we see guys do this every, year in and year out. Yeah. It's always a, a couple weeks, they're back, and they're good to go. When he says that, like the way he said it makes it sound way more eccentric he than said, it really... He said, I tore it up. Like I, you know, I, yeah, like yeah. I tore up my tore knee. It off. Yeah. It's not, it's makes not it sound like it was an actual tear. But it's just one of those things where I don't know enough about it. So like now... Here's what it comes so down to. So he's not your one three anymore. Here's what, yeah, here's what it comes down to. Like, if I was taking him before Zeke and Derrick Henry, now I'm taking Zeke and Derrick Henry before Kamara just because of that extra concern. It's my first round pick, man. Where, I don't want to fuck where's around. Where's Kamara for you now? Uh, uh, it's probably close to that, but because I was, I'm, I was, he's my one three. So I was still high on him. He was at my one three too. But I am. This is this is a little concerning. I'm Derrick Henry is over him. I would even like if I know Dalvin Cook's playing, I might even consider taking Dalvin Cook over. All right, him see, now. that's I'm stuck. I could do Dalvin Cook, but you have to make sure that you reach. Two extra rounds to get Madison. Like that's the only well, for sure yeah. with it. Kamara's still the one on three for me until until we get more clarification. Because now that that's out in the air, I'm sure like the beat reporters and everyone's up. getting bugging, It'll come bugged up. about like we need to know more about Kamara. We need to know more about this situation. I'm, so I think I think it will and come. If we to see light. some clips and we see him in pads and they're practicing and whatnot, and we get some more validation on it, then I, I'm sure he'll go back to being. It's just one of those too, things so. where you know if you have the three four pick 
and you were looking at Kamara, you might want to just maybe reconsider. That's it. Just and know that there could be a risk going into it now. Versus and a Zeke and a Henry behind him are not bad consolation. Yeah, you're not like so. taking a hit here to take. It's just. It's literally just. I don't know. If they said he was still rehabbing from something that he tore, then I'd be like, okay. But, like, there's no... There was nothing that was, like, negative about it other than him saying I he just, had an injury. The big problem is we don't know what the ago. injury is, and we don't know if he actually needed surgery. They said you should get surgery, but you can rehab it, and he chose to rehab. Because, like, if surgery was an option, then surgery is almost always the right way to go. But people get, like, surgery things. on, like, those small MCL things, too. They get, like, a little procedure where it's, like, a knee scope or whatever the fuck mm-hmm. it is, and then get back on the field. Honestly, if you got surgery, I, don't, I wouldn't give one fuck about this. So, But that's just me. All yeah, right. so anyway, so just be a little uh, weird. Keep an eye on that, too. See what happens with the final reporting of it. Darius Geis uh, has some, some issues, beat some uh, women up, and he's a piece of shit, and he got cut. So Antonio Gibson is now— What are you doing with Geis if you're in Dynasty? So I got offered, like I said to you guys last night, I got offered two-thirds and a fourth for Darius Geis, and I had just Smash. traded a first. I traded a, a, my 112 for Darius Geis last summer, or la- like last year. And I was, like, really happy about that because I was like, that 112 is going to be Justin Jefferson or some shit. And I was like, Geis is going to be the guy this year. Yeah, so I obviously took an L on that. I'm still hesitant to pull the trigger because Geis could end up with a six-game suspension. He's 23 years old. Another team will give him a Kareem Hunt kind of chance. Well, and that, but this is what we were talking about last night. The Kareem Hunt situation, Kareem Hunt never had an injury history like this. I think two-thirds and a fourth maybe is not enough. If you can get a second thrown in there, yeah, I'd probably reconsider that. I just um, think I don't think his outlook, his future is very bright. No, I don't see him playing like with the way the world's going and people are actually starting to like take some things like more seriously. Yeah. I don't see the it's just a bad look for the NFL. But I've also but we've also said that for everything that happens. It's true. It's Every true, time we're like they care too much about PR to not do anything and then they just don't he'll really be, do he'll, anything. He'll, he'll, I just just don't see him playing the NFL again. I think that's I think, I think that's, that's a, a hard stretch. stretch. I think you're talking because th- and here's why we're talking about. Of the running back position. Well, they throw in new guys every year at the running back position. Teams find a random undrafted guy. They put them in there, and it works. You know what it is? If this was quarterback or, like, a wide receiver one, it's a different story. You know what kills? I think it's it's realistic that he gets back on the field. I think now to get to where we hoped he would be in Dynasty is just a a Mount Everest uphill battle. I think he's a huge – if someone will give you a pick for him, just take it. And you run think? with it. I, yes. I think I'm like starting to side with you on that one. I just like I, I just looking at it like first piss, of all, even pisses if, me the fuck even off. Even if he does end up playing, is he gonna really be what you want him to That's be anyway? I mean, now, like, so he's one, and he's one tear away anyway. So exactly. and that he's, was even before beating the already, shit out of him. He looked, like I've said this. He was never even on my board. So like this is not an issue for me. Like <laughs> I never not wanted on my a piece board. of him just because of the whole injury history. It, listen, the guy's made of glass. He runs too hard for his body. His body can't handle the way he runs. Got to respect that. Though. Who the fuck is he, though? He's nobody. Like, who's going to really reach out and try and take Darius Geis and put him as their RB1 and their team? And That's their what system? I mean. Now, with all the shit, it's just there's there's so many it's obstacles in battle. front of him to get to that RB. Because he could have easily, if this didn't happen, he could have been the RB1 in Washington this he year. He was still in Washington. Yeah. Different story. But, like, he's not going to go somewhere and take over someone's role. Well, in AP's, the middle, AP still he still does. has a suspension to deal with. And it's just get rid of him. Get the fuck off. Get Geis off your fucking team. I'm keeping him now. Now I'm keeping him probably official. The, probably the right God, move. He's done. It's probably the He'll right move. He'll be bike. No. All right. No, no guy. Uh, so, guys, Gibson. yeah. Antonio Gibson, buy, sell, hold. What are we doing here? I'll hold him. I, if, I, if, I, I'm in, if I have him in Dynasty, I'm fucking ecstatic. Because yeah, wherever I, you I'm got pumped. him, whatever you got him, value. his value just moved you up You guys saw five, my text rounds. on Sunday. I was, I was, I was happier than that the, kid on Thanksgiving. The problem is with redraft. Okay. Here, the, redraft, different story. Redraft, he's going to move up to like the sixth, redraft, seventh Redraft, I'm not touching him. I'm, I'm out on that. No way. I'm out I on don't, sixth, no seventh way. round. Dynasty. I don't want him in the eighth or ninth either. I don't want him. Well, yeah. if he's starting. I, like ninth is probably where I'd be okay taking him. The, the problem with Gibson is the same problem we have with guys. Like, talent can only take you so far in the Washington fucking backfield. You know? Like, their offensive line is shit. They're not going to have a lot of goal line opportunities. Like, even if you are involved in that offense... Doesn't doesn't mean you're going to average anything more than three point seven yards. You get fucking forty seven yards a game and no touchdowns. Like that's nothing for me. Thank you. Like, yeah. So with Gibson, will. it's that. Plus, like, I mean, there's all these reports that say he's raw and he needs more work to well, become. He's not really a running player. back. It's not a running back. It's not. That's the thing. That's we're fantasy. drafting him in the sixth round because he's he's fun to watch. Is he going to be the slot wide receiver? Is he going to be the yeah. third down yeah. running back? Is he going to be the two minute? Like we he might go week no, in and week out. So he's he could start the different. year as the third string running back in Washington. Like yeah. Yeah. NFL oh, coaches yeah. do that to rookies. Like, oh yeah, that, for sure. And six round is way and too especially, fucking early. Especially, especially in a, especially in a season like this when you already have a veteran like Adrian Peterson who's he like took just the gonna, words right out of like, you don't have to worry about AP. Like hey, like you know what to do, right? Okay, like you don't want to have to teach Antonio Gibson, especially with a rookie, a young quarterback in a new system. That's that's he's the perfect kind of guy. Like like. Eight, ten plays a game, 
That's what I mean. But, but that's that's, but like, that's not sustain. You can't have that's that. Not six, no, that's not no. six round material. Yeah. No. Fantasy, Fantasy Twitter loves him because of his pass catching ability. But just because he plays like you can slot him in as your running back doesn't mean he's going to be out there yeah. catching ten passes like, a game. Yeah, you're, what you're going to get is a guy. Who, no one in the Washington backfield is going to average more than like four point four yards per carry, which means. Like you're you're depending on what Antonio Gibbons to get seven targets a game? Not gonna happen. Not gonna that's, fucking happen. That's too much. Doesn't happen out of the backfield. So yeah, I'm I'm in redraft. I'm out. But in dynasty, I'm just super happy that I ended up getting him. And I probably would invest a somewhat early round pick because I think over the long run the talent will probably win out. And uh, we've seen Ron Rivera and whatever use a guy like Christian McCaffrey in very versatile roles. So I think we'll see that light version of Gibson over the long run. You know, Hope a year so. or two down the. So down the line. to sum this up, I am uh, I'm a sell. I would, if I have him in Dynasty, I'm selling him. I'm not, I'm not selling him in Dynasty. I don't think you're going to get better value for him anytime soon. Because I think what's going to happen is he's going to play like we saw, like we thought. He's not going to be that good. He's not going to get a lot of opportunities. And then anybody who was going like, to give you like a second-round pick now or like a fucking player and something. You can't give up. You bought him for a second-round pick, and you're going to give him, him, him for a second-round pick now? And a player. Like I'm saying, you get like a, a player back and like a pick. What What player? What value that player well, you could do know, something like a second and laviska chanel which is something i would accept on okay, oh for that's, sure that's dude if you could if you give me they any one of the rookie the wide receivers i'd probably take him straight up i think his value is going to hold for so long even kj hamler no i'm talking you know like what's going to happen the big four oh, what's going to happen is gibson will have like three or four monster plays this year highlight plays and then those twitter clips will go around for the next two years yeah. and he will continue to have value somewhere in your leagues so you might as well hold on to him because like the value is gonna stay there, and the chance over one of those wide receivers in a second round pick, the, chan- I will the chance of him exploding, and if I would, I'd be salty. I would like to see what what we have in Antonio Gibson, nah. but I will say like Mike moved Antonio Gibson. It was a ridiculous trade. He got like two firsts. Yeah, uh, see, like exa- that's when you have ridiculous. That's what I'm talking about. It wasn't about right straight now, up. It was like other pieces, but it was like crazy, crazy. It's, it's with the Gibson hype involved. because the fact that people think he's gonna come in week one, be the starting running back, and they're idiots. Take advantage of those idiots and trade him and get everything you can for him because. In three weeks, in seven weeks, you're not going to be able to get anything for him. I'm telling you. That's it. Tell us, animal. I, t- I just did. Tell us something else. I just says it. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm sell. What are you? Buy? I'm not going to lose her. I'm holding. I'm holding. You're holding. You're holding. All right, so they're idiots. I'm not going out and buying him. You guys are idiots. Listen to me. Um, all right. Next issue. Yahoo tight end premium problem. This is a big okay. one. Yeah. Let me, let me fucking run down this nonsense. Hit so- it. So last week, we voted to move our redraft league to tight end premium. So we play in a, a normal half PPR league. We wanted to spice things up at the tight end position, right? So they get full PPR. Now, that was what we voted on. We've been playing this league on Yahoo for 11 years now. And we like Yahoo a lot as our redraft season-long platform. However, as all these big companies do, they move in fucking slow motion. They do not change. They do not adapt to the market because... They're a monopoly, and they think that they can be complacent and continue to hold their market share. We have players like Sleeper and Fleet Flicker constantly updating and changing their rules to provide for the market. So we go into Yahoo, and I try to change the reception point total for just tight ends to one point while leaving everything else at a half point. I come to realize, not possible. Ridiculous. So I tweet. Is this for real? And people are like, yeah, you can't do tight end premium on Yahoo. And I tweet at Yahoo. And of course, because they're so fucking pretentious, they don't answer me, right? Like they just think they're above everybody because they're fucking Yahoo fantasy. I like the platform, but listen, if you're not going to adapt to where we're at, we're going to move and we're going to take the big dogs with us. Okay. Adapt or die. Adapt or die. So now we're in a predicament where... We've been playing in this league. This is our 12th year, and most of the guys, are they're, they're not into fantasy like we are, so they don't really, you know, they're happy with Yahoo. And now— I think this is going to be a problem because they're going to go into 100%. That. They're going to complain because we have a couple guys in our league that all they do is complain. So as soon as I'm like, I want to move to— or whatever. I got like three guys top of my mind. I already know this is going to be a fucking issue for. Josh Chink. Josh Jacobs. So now I'm like, okay, as the commissioner, we already made the vote. So do I change the league's platform to Sleeper or Flea Flicker or one of these that will customize the rules for us? And I think over the long run would be the best decision. Or do we just stay on Yahoo because most of the league wants it and et cetera? Do we go to a vote? Like, what do you what do you guys think? Right I, now, I want to use my dictator powers and just say, fuck y'all, we're moving a platform because this is the rule that we changed. So I was going to say, since we vote on everything, we're supposed to vote on everything, we bring it up, say, listen, Yahoo doesn't support tight end premium. We voted for tight end premium. So now we have to decide, do we want to keep tight end premium or do we want to keep Yahoo? That's it. And if they say, like, we want tight end premium, then... This listen, will be the last move. episode I agree with you more than once. But I am on that boat, too. Dude, I'm just fucking spitting fire, fire takes today. I'm on that boat. I, I, 
I'm very upset about it. Like, very upset. Same. This sucks. Because I, I genuinely enjoy what would you, Yahoo. What would your vote be? What would your guys' vote be? I'm staying on Yahoo. Because I never voted for Titan Premium in the first place. Well, yeah, that's easy. True. I'd probably go to sleep because I'm already there and I know about it. So yeah, I would like to move over. This this is probably my last Yahoo league. So if this moves over, then I have all my leagues situated on. Actually, that's still a lie because I have like four other leagues everywhere: MFL and fucking yeah. FFPC and shit. But that would at least now down one more league. This is detrimental. It really that's is. That's what I mean. It, it just become a problem now. And like Yahoo, so grow the, the fuck up. Here's the next thing though. Like if we are gonna switch. Is it going to be sleeper or is it going to be flu flicker? That I would I would just choose and not I'm not voting on that because no one else has used it. Exactly that's what I'm yeah. saying. So if we do like I would like to we could do, we could vote. discuss that between the three of us maybe because like I'll take it I'm up on with, both platforms. I'll take it up so, with the league committee. You know I'll get back. I'm to on it. the committee, but I vote flu flicker. I love their platform. Yeah, we'll figure that out afterwards. We'll, we'll get we'll do guys. the original so vote now. Me, vote, right, vote for tight end premium or Yahoo. That's the end of the story. Yeah, so we're yeah. we're big fucking upset right now. Let us know in the comments what what platform do you guys use for season long. And how customizable is it? Like, are you happy with it? And if you start to change your rules, like you're probably going to have to shift like we are if you're on the Yahoo's, the ESPN's, the NFL's, CBS's and shit like that. So uh, we're in a little bit of predicament, but so that's our life. Our life is just one big giant fucking predicament. No offense. Really wouldn't want any other way because then life is too boring. You know, just keeps us on our fucking toes. Big twinkle toe guy. Whatever. Is that it? Show's over? Is this hey, so you haven't I, smoked a lot of pot. So, Animal, right? like, you're, as the host, you're supposed to, like, know when we're getting to the next segment and not be like, guys, are we uh, on to the next uh, segment uh, now? Is that it? All, all right, right, all right. so Skirt. we're going to get into the fantasy talk here. Dana but Gordon. Before we do, <laughs> Dana Gordon, make sure you guys go and buy the draft guide because you're running out of time. The season's going to start soon. Listen, listen to our fantasy stuff, and then if you give a shit about what we're saying, it'll be 15 times better in the actual draft guide. So we'll plug it at the end. Let's talk about guys we love. All right, someone else start because I'm not going first. I don't All right, hear well, y'all know. Y'all been listening. I'll keep my shit brief because you yeah, guys have, yeah, no. have probably watched my shit and know who I love, especially over the last couple of weeks. been putting out these must-own running back and wide receiver videos. The guy I love. Who do you love? And I will be picking without question in the first round if I'm the back half. <laughs> Write that shit down, snacks. As a commissioner, I will manually put in the picks that I want and keep fair. you out of it. It's fair enough. Yahoo probably actually doesn't allow me to do that. So maybe Scumbags. I'm yeah. out. Fuck y'all. Miles Sanders is my guy. Don't care that he was a third-round ADP to start the summer. Moved up to the second round. At this point, I'm drafting him in, in the first round, and I'm probably drafting him as early as the 107 or 108. Hate it. Because that's that makes me feel really good. <laughs> yeah. Hate to see it. Miles Sanders, over 60 targets, 50 receptions, while playing 50% of the snaps last year. Jordan Howard monopolized that backfield for the first half. He got hurt. The Okay, so Doug Peterson has been the head coach there for four years. The narrative is that he runs a running back by committee. Last year, well, the single four highest game counts of a running back getting the percentage of snaps, the team share of the snaps in the backfield, the top four over the last four years were all Miles Sanders over the second half of the year. Okay, He, got, he had 80% of the snaps in four out of the final seven games that he played there. He became the workhorse. He was a legitimate top five fantasy running back over the second half of the year. They didn't bring in anybody to compete with him, okay? I, know, I understand Boston Scott is there, and he's going to catch some passes, but he also caught passes over the last month of the season while Miles Sanders still averaged six targets a game. Lee they winner. can both eat. We don't know what their weapon situation is going to be. They bring in Jalen Rager, and that's fun, but Deshaun Jackson, is he staying on the field? Alshon Jeffrey's going to start on the pup. Like, listen, this is Miles Sanders' backfield. Maybe he, maybe he doesn't get 25 touches a game. But we've seen plenty of running backs. The way that the NFL uses running backs now in space, getting them receptions, whatever, 18 touches a game, more than enough to return first-round value for Miles Sanders. So like, who else are they going to give goal line carries to? Like, they're not giving it to Boston Scott. No. Miles Sanders is no. 20, 25 pounds. No, we saw Miles Sanders. What if they just throw it to Zach Ertz? Because Carson Wentz was the best red zone quarterback in the NFL. Every team passes and runs. What, they're just not going to run the ball on the goal I'm line? I'm just saying that when they, they might feel more comfortable trying to throw one to Ertz. Okay, so with Clyde Edwards Hilaire, he's not going to get goal line carries because Patrick Mahomes wants to throw to Kelsey sometimes. <laughs> Don't, <laughs> shut, your, <laughs> shut your mouth. I love Miles Sanders. Like I will, I, He will be one of my highest on players this year. Love that motherfucker. All right, cool. I'll tell you about a real running back. Oh, boy. I'll Mike, tell you. Mike Williams. <laughs> Mike Williams. No. So, uh, Ronald Jones, a.k.a. Rojo. I've, uh... Oh, my. Yeah. That's just not okay. I, um... She can't be walking by during a Can't be walking session. by in that dress can't like be, that. Bitch. Bitch. Um, all right, so, Ronald Jones, 
Tom Brady is now a Buccaneer, so we all know that Tom Brady just makes players better around him. I'm talking about a second year in Bruce Arians' system. I'm talking strong. I'm talking fast. And I'm talking an improved line with Tristan Wirfs. So there's just a couple of things. Let's get into the fact that he does not get enough credit for his yards created. Derrick Henry was number one in the league with 1.75 yards created. And guess who was number two? Mr. Ronald Jones with 1.72. Oh, so the young Lewis. That's something to consider. Also, Ronald Jones, second in the league in broken tackles per I attempt. Hate stats. With not a stat point one, he's the only guy I have stats on. <laughs> with point one three per attempt behind Kamara's point one six. Not bad. Also wait, 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 hold on. We're worried about Kamara though. Well, this is last year. Correct. And that's when the that's when he tore his whole shit up. Yeah, well Kamara was number one. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but you were right. worried about him because of the torn knee. Listen, damn it. Just let me talk. Get bodied. 230 yards taken away because of penalties, and the Bucks were, guess what, the most penalized team in the NFL That's last sad. year. I didn't know that. Well, I knew that they were – I didn't – 230 yards away from penalties? Bad yeah. teams play bad. Wow. That was, no, Jason, that was just Ronald Jones. I know. I, yeah. I know. That's, that's a lot. And let's go with <laughs> – let's go no, with – That's a lot. He was second in the NFL in yards per catch for running backs with 10.1 yards per catch. Hit 31 receptions on 41 targets, only one drop. Listen, I, so I, the, I think the narrative this, that he can't catch is stupid because he can. What it comes down to is the fact that like his rookie year was a bombshell. Yeah, but he last was very year, immature. And people, yeah, dude, he came in as the youngest running back in that class. Yeah. He moves out to fucking Tampa Bay after being at USC. He probably thinks that's the lifestyle that he's going to live forever. Realize he gets smacked in the face by the NFL. And like, you can't live like this if you want to be a good running back. He got mature eventually. And last year, like he, he was legitimately, you saw the, he was you legitimately watched, good at football last year. If you yeah, watched yeah. the tape, you saw the flashes and the bursts and just like, he can play football. He just needs and some more opportunity. And with the height that Keyshawn Vaughn's getting, it's just, And you have to yeah. realize, too, like... Well, just going to become a steal. James Winston was constantly turning the ball well, over. Arian just said, Arian just came out a couple days ago, and guy. he was like, Jones is the guy. Everyone yeah. else is yeah. competing for, like, secondary roles and yeah. shit. Jones which, is going to be there. Which, you know, Coach Talk, we always, we always put, like, you know... Arians practice. is pretty straightforward he is. with this shit. Yeah, he's he's exactly James Winston. He's the one who said, like, James Winston, like, he said, like... If we can win with this guy, we can Jones win with anybody. Jones is going to be that guy, yeah. And I've like I've told you this over the last couple of months. I've like slowly transitioned to that bandwagon. Yeah. And I've got him in a few of my dynasty leagues, and I'm happy about it now. And I think like, yeah, man, like he, he was low key. I mean, it was the big concern was his pass catching work, and like, is he is he good enough to command the targets? And last year, dude, I mean, like over it. ten yards per reception. Like he was explosive in the pass game. And I just kept watching him and being like, yo, that was a good play. But this it's is with but James, it's fluky. It's Ronald Jones. It's fluky. It's this is fluky. With it's fluky. James and after like too. 15 of them, you're like, okay, maybe. Yeah, he just maybe got it's good. not. Now maybe Tom Brady's there. You know Tom Brady's gonna tell him how to run his routes, where to run them. Like, no, that's it. All those They're gonna be things. more run heavy. He'll probably have a bunch of games where he gets like 18 plus carries. Yeah, I, Even if it's I like just, 18 for 75 and one, like that's good. And the value no, is enough. still there. Enough. When's he getting drafted? What's he going? The eighth round, ninth round? Not about value. Just a good pick. No. Eighth round? No. He was he was for a while. He'll probably he's go. Starting in the, to climb he'll start up to now. go into like the sixth, probably. probably. Yeah. Keyshawn Vaughn was going before him in Dynasty Leagues. That's how dumb people are. Oh. That's how dumb people are. No, that's the hype. It's right after the draft. Anyway, and... I love Ronald Jones. He's gonna be absolute steal this year. Top fifteen running back potential. I'm on board with it. I'm all about it. Yeah, I'm with you. And I, I, was, I, will, I don't like saying that. Just want to I want to clarify this. Before the rookie draft, I made a trade for Ronald Jones in our Dynasty League and got ripped apart. Well, you gave up a lot for it. You gave, gave up, up two seven. You gave up multiple seconds. No, I gave up one. I gave up two seven. You didn't give up one I second up two for seven Ronald Jones. Two seven and the three one. And I got a three seven and someone back. I don't remember. I think that's wrong. No, you also not. traded. You also traded a guy I love in Kareem Hunt. I did. I did. You trade did Kareem trade him, which I really thought that was a bad move on your end. Well, I drafted Kareem. I did like four yeah, startup dynasty leagues this year, and I drafted him everywhere. But we're talking about redraft, and I still love him in a redraft league. Clearly, he's the backup behind Chubb. But is he like really a back? He's gonna be on the field a lot. I feel like he's what was it thirty two? He's gonna get thirty two percent. Work. He was playing in the slot. Yeah, I don't trust Jarvis and OBJ to be on the field all season. Yeah, I I agree with you there. I mean, he caught thirty seven balls in eight games. Like he's clearly the receiving threat out of that backfield. We know what Chubb is, but honestly, an improved offensive line in Cleveland. Do you think that's gonna factor in enough with no, Kareem Hunt's no, running no, volume? No, 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 you know not what not I mean? I blacked out. Sorry. <laughs> I saw that. I was like, what are you doing? I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Uh, I just think overall the offense is gonna be better. Like Stefanski coming over, and I know you had a piece in the um, in the draft guy that said that talked about how much screen plays Minnesota ran the most yards for running backs off screen plays, and with a Kareem Hunt who could arguably be one of the best receiving backs out of the backfield, I think that's pretty. It, it's pretty such dynamic. a hard backfield to. No, it is. It's impossible, but it's also a funny stat that in eight games he finished RB two more than Chubb did. When he was on the field. So yeah. my only question is like how how much is like a top 24, 25 finish no, no, really no, move the needle? I'm, uh, see, I'm not using the V word. 
I'm not using the V word. But that's the only reason you like him. If he was going in the third round, you would no, not. No, the value doesn't win you things. Upside wins you shit. Of course not. But if well, I'm there's, going, that's the value. The upside. If I can take a guy it, in the sixth round, but where's his upside if, if Nick Chubb doesn't get hurt? Decide to go. Why his upside is he's getting receiving work as a as a running back. It's not upside. That's just a thing. He's gonna get plenty of it as a sixth round pick. It's upside. Everyone in sixth round is gonna get work. If it's a standard league, you obviously don't really care for Kareem Hunt at all. But if I decide to stupidly go like receiver, receiver, quarterback, and I'm stuck with with no running backs in the sixth round, I'm perfectly okay with taking Kareem Hunt. Yeah, I've, I've started to I, I like Kareem Hunt a lot. I started to kind of fade away from him a little bit because I think there's other running backs there that have more upside around that pick. I just think like a Rojo. I just yeah, no, like, yeah like I would take Rojo over Kareem. So Hunt. I would I would too, but you picked Rojo. I first. think yeah, I think Kareem Hunt's upside only but lies within Nick Chubb's injury and like the likelihood of, he's played 16 games back to back years. Like it's it just yeah. You know, I, I, I just I, I love what what we saw down yeah. the stretch. And the he was good. He was good. I just don't think it's going to lead to. No, I, but I think one of one of those receivers going out boosts him up too, which is a likelihood. Sure. Of it's happening. a very yeah, big very likelihood. likelihood, especially in this. Jarvis is coming off surgery. Odell's a pussy. He's always hurt. Corona era, like it's very possible Nick Chubb doesn't play a couple weeks. Yeah. Like there's all these things. Like it's and one at of that those point, years where at like, that point the sixth seventh round, I'm going to bet on a talent like that. Handcuffs so. that were already valuable have become even more valuable now. Correct. That's not even. That's not handcuff round though. That's that's early. No, you're well, still you drafting start. He is a handcuff, but he's a like a high priority handcuff kind of guy. He's not like a handcuff, but, but he's like, gonna be like fifth, sixth round pick. So I think that's that's yeah, early I think, for handcuff. Yeah, I think I think it all uh, it depends on kind of what you do in the early rounds of your draft. Yeah. You know, so if you're going receiver, receiver, quarterback, and a super flex, you're gonna probably you somebody like him is a, is a good target for your for your RB one. So, Kareem Hunt. Cool. Cool. Yeah, cool. 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 Yeah. Cool. 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 He's a scumbag too, by the way. Woman beater, but. Whatever. Okay. Okay. You know who's not a scumbag? Dan Me. Jones. Not you. You are. <laughs> you really are. Allen Robinson is really not. Eh. Especially if he's in your fucking fantasy lineup this year. Eh. 154 targets last year. I love Allen Robinson. So do I. He's a beast. How many, how many players saw more targets than him? Than Allen uh, Robinson? Wait, how many targets did he have? 154. Uh, Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas? Thomas? Is that it? The only Michael one? Thomas and Julio. Only yeah, two players in the NFL. Too. Now... There is a chance with that how many catchable sh- targets. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a lot of wide receivers that saw more of those. Uh, I just, you know, this is a, a combination of just getting an insane amount of volume. Like that's so many fucking targets, yeah. and he went so underappreciated. And m- my only concern, of course, is if Mitch Trubisky ends up sneaking his way into eight starts this year, it's going to be a problem for Allen Robinson, of course. But he did just get 154 targets with Mitch say, Trubisky really as a quarterback. Tar- much, but we just we just need to see Nick Foles as the guy there. We yeah. need to see Nick Foles delivering the ball to Allen Robinson. Make you feel much more comfortable. It, it's crazy, man. Like Allen Robinson tore the ACL, then had the down year the year after that. Last year, though, same thing with like Rojo. Like when you watched him, you're like, yo, I forgot how good this dude was. He's a beast, explosive, like making plays with the ball in his hands. I'm just like, yo, I I didn't realize like how good Allen Robinson really was. And, and he so, hasn't done, he has never played with a quarterback. Like a like no, he went a, from Blake a, a real quarterback, to, yeah. right? Yeah. So last year was like almost worst case scenario I feel like for him in, in that alpha role and they don't bring they lose Taylor Gabriel, right? The only thing they bring in is Jimmy Graham, so oh, downfield targets nothing. are going to be there. <laughs> wow. Like they they bring in no competition on the offense for both like a David Montgomery you and Allen Robinson. Would expect um Anthony Miller to like play this year, so like that's outside of that. It's Maybe like the only I mean the shoulder thing is probably going to be. That's what I'm saying. Like you're going to expect him to start, but is he yeah. really going to play? He may get 350 targets. That's Allen Robinson. That's what I mean. Like even if he, even if like fucking 60 percent of them are uncatchable, he's going to have enough volume to where, where he's, he's still produce. stacked up. Like I don't see any chance where he's going as like the wide receiver 10, 11, 12. I don't see any chance where he doesn't return wide receiver one value. You know, easily. Like you might draft him as wide receiver 11 and he finishes wide receiver 10, but like okay, yeah. I, there go that man. I'm I'm all in on Allen Robinson. Big big. Uh, I'm annoyed that he like I wanted him to do well last year, but I'm annoyed that he did so well that like people are gonna be now, so high. Now everybody yeah, knows yeah. about him again. Exactly, it's one of those things. But, He's um, also a free agent after this year. Yeah, so it's a big year for him. But you that's know gonna what? be interesting. You think he's going to? I really, NY? I, I could really think I could it, that's it. a perfect fit. I could see it. They really need could. it. They need that number one alpha, and he'd be perfect. Who? The Giants. Oh, so perfect. Gary Vee is going to convince him to come to the Jets, I bet. They're fucking boys. You said they need that number one alpha. They, they do. might have one this year. Let's see. I'm going to go with a guy that I really, really love this year. I sure hope year. so. Mr. Darius Slayton in the ninth round ADP. Like, come on. In the ninth round. This guy has, he has the chance to be the wide receiver one on the New York Giants. I mean, you're competing with Golden Tate. who's Yeah, he's a great receiver, but he's older. And Yuck. he's not going to be the guy that you're going to rely on for Daniel Jones to become... His wide receiver wants. It's not going to happen. You want the younger guy like Darius Slayton. Missed the first two games last season. Still had 740 yards and eight touchdowns. Eight touchdowns. 
You look at any other year, you're lo- you're like, holy shit, what a rookie year. Yeah. Any other year, but last year was just monumental. Everybody had a bullet, yeah. When you have the god Terry McLaurin, the god fucking. Well, exactly. You had a lot of rookies that just went off last year. So, like, Darius Slayton was completely underlooked. Like, he was an unknown. He, he was, but, and he had. Not by everybody. There was a, I, he was a big play guy, so there was, a, like, a lot of games where he didn't even have five receptions, and he still had, like, 18 fantasy points or whatever it may be. He's very reliant on that. So, right? but the thing is here, I'm looking at 4-3 speed, solid hands, and a real opportunity to take the wide receiver one role. I'm an opportunity guy. I'm a value guy. I love the opportunity that he's going to have a chance to get peppered with targets by Daniel Jones because, <laughs> as we know, like the Giants are not a very good team this year. Most likely, they're going to be playing. They're either going to be throwing a lot. Don't fucking don't don't cater to him not being angry at you. Say, say what you feel. <laughs> Giants aren't going to be that good. Team. Seven seed. They Nine could be, and seven. They could be We're playing from behind or playing in tight games where there's a lot of scoring going on. So. Lots of opportunity, like I said, and Daniel Jones not afraid to throw it. The guy's no, fucking. Beast. He doesn't care if he. If I'm he here wants for the. I'm here for the Slayton upside. Yeah, I'm, I'm all I, about yeah. it. I'm all about it. I think that uh, if you can, if his ADP stays where it is, you're gonna get a top 25 wide receiver in the ninth round. That's. I mean, I hope so. You finished as like 35 last year. Yeah, he could end a full season. Full yeah. season now. In second year with DJ. Why not? Well, you know, it did all the weapons. If all the weapons are on the field, then I. I We've bit, talked yeah. about it. It's so hard to put context behind the Giants. It is. It's impossible. Season for fantasy. It's impossible because I everyone I, was. I had a good that's article. Why, that's I can't why find I it. There. There's a carousel of fantasy. There was a guy that did a, a, a good breakdown of like all the targets and how they were distributed based on when like Darius Slay and Golden Tate and oh, Shepard played together. Then I know. when Shepard and off the field. Like, I know who. I know who did that. Slayton's uh, like me, stayed the same. Motherfucker. Was it? I did that. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. There were five games last year, week 5, 12, 14, 15, and 17, where all three wide receivers, and I'm just referring to Slayton, Golden Tate, Sterling Shepard. In the yardage and touchdown department, obviously Slayton kind of blew both of those dudes out of the water, and that is because, as you mentioned, he is a fantastic deep threat. Oh, now, well, Slayton was really good. I read did. that. No, and, uh, it was no, I, didn't do an, I didn't do an article. I, I, I posted like you a chart read that off article? of yeah, I didn't. No, 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 I didn't. I, I, didn't I, I, test, I test wise, I told you, I don't think he's that, that kind of alpha guy, but the opportunity, the value, everything is there. When you're that late in the draft, you look for upside, and Slayton exactly. certainly has it. Exactly. That. He has plenty of it. He has plenty of it. You know who doesn't have any upside, but he's going to receive about 190 targets this year because there's really no one else to throw the football to? Adam Thielen. I'm yeah. going back to the round, baby. I'm Thiel- back. Thielen's bike, Thielen. baby. I'm back, baby. Adam Thielen. He hasn't been good since I worshipped him. So guess what we're going to do now? We're going to worship Love again. That. Diggs, get the fuck out. Jefferson, unproven. Who the fuck is he? We have no idea. Thielen's back. He was injured last year, but he's never had an injury history, so I'm not concerned. He's going to bounce back just fine. He's going to get 150 targets, minimum. Minimum. There's no one else to throw the fucking ball to. That's what I'm saying. Like There's Irv literally Smith. nobody to throw the football to. There's He's still, like the Miles Sanders of wide receivers. It's the perfect opportunity. It's pure volume. Right? <laughs> you have to throw up. No. <laughs> it looked like, like, like he was going to poop. Look looked like Steen. <laughs> no, but it's just it's the perfect storm for Adam Thielen bounce back year. They're going to be a run-heavy team. We know that, obviously. But Kirk has to throw the football to somebody, and Thielen is going to reap the benefits. Reap. Peppered, right? Peppered yeah. with targets. Thielen's back. I'm back. Huge fucking year for Adam. We're all bikes. Let's go. He was also a beast last year before he got hurt. I know. The volume I know. wasn't there, but he was, you know, easy that, top 10 monster, wide receiver. He's clearly Kirk's, like, favorite touchdown That's the thing. Like, the chemistry too. is so there. We've yeah, seen him yeah. play at an elite level in the NFL, and it's not like he's dropping off because he's losing athleticism because he never fucking had it to begin yeah, with. Yeah, I, I see people, oh, he's, he's age 30 season. It's Stop. like he's played. Stop. He's, he's been, his workload like is like 24 years. 30 and exactly. I feel great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, see? No, Adam Thielen, love him. We're all back <laughs> like, You think you'd command a single target if you played a full 16? A screen. You're an outside wide receiver. I'll take a, an outside. You think you're an outside wide receiver, yeah. Are you, uh, are you commanding any targets? No, I'm a running back kind of guy. No, no, no. I'm not giving you it's that not option. not the question. No, though. I'm not commanding targets. <laughs> the full 16 games. I'm, 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 I'm blocking. <laughs> getting bodied. I'm just going to block guy every five yards. <laughs> Fucking, uh, I get a target. Who's the Bengals cornerback that's always in you trouble with the law? You would get a target? First of all, yeah. wait, hold on. See, who's, um, the, who's the Bengals cornerback that like, fought somebody in an airport last year? He's, uh, Pac-Man, Pac-Man, perfect? Pac-Man Jones? Pac-Man Jones. I would, I would give up 50, 51% Pac-Man of my equity to see 10 routes of Animal versus Pac-Man Jones on the field. You'd get him. He's getting old. Get him what? He'd get him. Get him with what? You'd, you'd he, get by him. You'd, he, you'd burn him. That would be the best thing. I'd have to life. try and like run through him, and I still probably wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, I don't he's think he's got so much that. weight on you. Like I know, even how small he is, he's probably humongous athlete. I'd love to see him just punch you straight in your face on the first yeah. route. <laughs> That'd be a little, a little harsh. Wear it's one penalty. We're good. Nothing. It's not something that's out of 
Pac-Man Jones' yeah, it's uh, not, it's aggression. Not that crazy. But uh, Adam Thielen, good ball player. Back. Lock, lock him up. Me? You? Who? You. You, baby, you. Ooh, I don't know yeah. who to pick. You, I got, baby, I got you. A list, I got a list of like six guys. I have two guys, and I might not pick either of them. So I've talked too much about DJ Chark. If I can if I can extend my list, I would put DJ Chark, Terry McLaurin, DeAndre Swift there. But I'm going to go with Darren Waller. Ah. Darren Waller's getting a lot of hate for the— this Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, go ahead. Sorry. You want no. no? No, 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 no. It's not about Darren Waller. I just think we. Then shut your mouth and know your role. I see what we're doing. Yeah, we're 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 in on Vegas, baby. I mean, Vegas, I, I baby. Can, I could pivot. I could yeah, pivot. pivot. No, no, no. Just Why? It. It's the Raiders, baby. Oh uh, well, he wasn't my third. Yeah. I, I thought, thought he was. Had, That's oh what I no, you switched. Oh, yeah, right. oh, you, you got, did. That's right. Anyway, I got my bad. My bad. Sorry, sorry about that. You can take that out. Darren Waller. So Waller's one of those guys where everyone needs to convince themselves that he was too good last year that now he's going to be bad. Like, that's what I think with Darren Waller. We're seeing this with so many players. Like, oh, he was the only mouth to feed there. And it's like, okay, they bring in a couple rookies now. Like, so what? I understand that Brian Edwards, polarizing prospect. Henry Ruggs, certainly a polarizing prospect. And sure, they're going to elevate this passing game overall. Derek Carr has been wildly underrated in terms of statistics and accuracy over the last few years. Darren Waller racked up an insane number of yards last year. And was amongst the elite tight ends. He had three touchdowns. And someone like tweeted out, like, I'm concerned about Darren Wall's involvement in the red zone. And uh, for someone with that many targets, he was like amongst the bottom league, whatever. Darren Waller literally that led the team. doesn't sound very intelligent. It, it, was, it was something like his involvement in the red zone is really concerning. And I was like, he literally led the team in red zone targets. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's don't, like the Raiders' red zone I don't, it, was concerning. Like. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I was like, I don't know what to tell you there. Darren Waller was a guy that when you look at it, he's what you look for in an, an upside explosion type of tight end. He was like top three in yak, top three in yards per reception, yards per target. He makes plays with the ball in his hands, and he could stretch the seam and go for like a 40-yard touchdown catch. You don't have a lot of tight ends that do that. You have the guys like Zach Ertz and like the Mike Isikis who pile up volume and Hunter Henrys Mm -hmm. and hopefully are involved in the red zone. But if you can't predict that, that's not a good pick. Those guys get the ball and then fall down. Darren Waller is a guy who commands a lot of targets, as we saw last year. And still makes plays with the ball in his athlete. hands. I was gonna. I'm he was a wide receiver, like a, turned tight end. I was gonna try to think of like a comparison. Who's like the last like tight end that was basically a wide receiver that you can think of? Evan Ingram. Evan was, Ingram, like Jordan Reed. I was, I was gonna I'm say Aaron Hernandez. Saying. Well, no, yeah, it's not that's like not a, a bad. That's not a bad. It's, like a, it's a good guy, but it's a good comparison, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I just think I just think people are like really like I don't think this is difficult. Like you're just nah, being just like Darren Waller was too good last year that he's now a bad pick. What's the problem like, with everybody? It's what they do. Regression, vo- all mm. these things. It drives me fucking nuts and I understand regression. It makes sense when you to a certain extent. When you use situation first. Look at the situation, look at the player and then if you need to say like okay, this is his baseline projections, are these realistic? Let me look at the regression afterwards. That's how I look at it. Darren Waller's a baller. He's everything you look for in a high upside tight end. I can't wait for Waller to Fucking be the tight end one this year overall. Wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Skirt. Dana Gordon. Dana Gordon. You're on speakerphone and my wife's in the car. <laughs> You're on speakerphone. My wife's in the car. <laughs> Go. Get the fuck off me. <laughs> All right. I so love Darren Wolf. I have three guys here to choose from. Why don't you just name all three? Give a quick tidbit on each. Mm, take let, us, me, let me take, destroy take us to all the three. Animal right, yeah, you want, an right. animal analysis, so, real quick. Right. I like Derek Carr, so he's so fine. Derek Carr. I that's why I didn't really want to talk Derek about him so much Raiders, but I just think that you know we're talking about the like QB twenty six or whatever he's going off. So like the value is there, and for super flex leagues, as your QB two, I think you'll be very very happy by the end of the year. Derek Carr, like you Nick said, was very underrated when it comes to accuracy and all that stuff. His only problem last year was he hit through 21 touchdowns. Low yeah, touchdown ugly. number, that's but ugly. the team had a lot of problems. You're talking about they put some weapons around him. So, like, any concerns that you have, it's like Derek Carr didn't have weapons. Now he's got weapons. So, like, if you don't know who to draft on the Raiders, like you're not sure if you want Waller or Ruggs or whatever, take Derek Carr. The whole oh. offensive environment's really good I want this run year. Yeah. All, offensive line, run offensive game, line, weapons. Yeah, exactly. like, it's it's all there. And Carr said he wants to prove everybody wrong, so that's exactly. huge. Listen, Carr he was huge. eighth in the NFL last year in passing yards. Yeah, he was like, literally the fucking MVP candidate a few years ago before he broke his leg. So, like... He can play. I'm really here for for Derek Carr fucking revenge. Wow. Season. He can play. I Boy can ball. I, I, I'm excited. To I'm see. excited Last year he was literally operating. Remember Tyrell Williams? We were like, I know. We were like, holy I shit. Look how good about he was. Ty- in the first for like three weeks. weeks. Yeah. And then he got hurt. And then who the fuck did Derek Carr have to throw Nobody. to besides baller Hunter. Darren Waller? Yeah. And and then like Hunter Renfro, but who's a rookie. And like Two games at the end hurt. of the year. Two games at the fucking end of the year. Number, one, number one receiver in the NFL. Look at Derek Carr's numbers, like fantasy-wise, the last like five games. They were all over 20-point games. Yeah. Solid. Situation is there. The offensive line is going to block for him. You look at the actual fucking jump they took up from the first year with 
Gruden as the and play I caller Gruden. to the second. Me too. As, I a, did, yeah. as, as a, a pass play coach, caller, good. yeah. Like the jump up from the first to second year was huge, and it's going to get even better into the third year. Like so. it's fun to clown on him, but the guy knows his shit. He really does. He's so I'm, I'm in on um, Derek Carr. So I'll give you a little more something here. Nicole Hardman. Nope. Second year in an offense. I think it's the third year as an actual wide receiver. Um, fast. We know that. I would bet that his routes have improved because – Andy Reid obviously wants his receivers to be able to run routes. He only started five games last year, but he shared time with Demarcus Robinson and Sammy <clears> Watkins. <throat> Here's my thing. I think he's going to eventually, if not earlier in the season, he should do it very early in the season, take those roles away from Demarcus Robinson and Sammy Watkins, take you targets away. Here's what I want from him, and here's why I like him so much. Six touchdowns last year. Pat Mahomes has thrown 40 touchdowns, whatever. you know, He's going to throw 35, 40 touchdowns. So there's so much – opportunity there for him to be relevant all i want for him is to keep those touchdowns and just double the targets double the targets he had 41 targets last year he caught 26 of those demarcus robinson had 55 targets with 69 percent of the snaps so give me mccall hardman in that demarcus robinson role with you know half of Demarcus's That's, targets from last year, it's the reason why I don't like him is because he needs that. To, he needs the role. We we have heard nothing that was like Miko's the wide receiver too. Now you know he he got completely phased. The, the, it's his, good on, in theory. His on like the only his only couple good games were when Tyree Kill was hurt, and then over the like I said this stat to you before oh, we yeah, started, no. which is why Ugly. you fucking switch your guy. Yeah, over the last nine games of the season last year for the Chiefs, Miko Harmon saw eleven targets. <laughs> 11 yeah. targets over nine games. The guy wasn't running routes. He was completely the wide receiver four. I could do that. And what has changed other than you want him to be the wide receiver two? Now, it's great that you fucking want him to be. But listen, yeah. like, there is a pecking order here. Well, he did run a lot of very long routes. And you're talking about a Pat Mahomes offense. Sure. He had the most slot receiving yards per route. What can you do with that in route. season long? Like, you're not cool. going gonna to put that guy in your lineup? This is my issue with him. It's, uh, there's, obviously, you're getting... This is the guys we love episode. You better not come in here with fucking issues. Oh, you better come in here with facts and fucking positivity or get the, him the fuck off the list. He was my fourth guy, so this isn't like, you know... I'm just he was off. number one when you first started it. No, he wasn't. Rojo was, <laughs> so stop it. Um, here's the thing, though. I just want to sum this up. Fast playmaker, Andy Reid system with the best quarterback in the league throwing to him. Second best, but yes. In theory, makes sense. That's terrible. You're I think he's a terrible season-long pick, though. Really bad season-long pick because you're never going to want to start well, him in your lineup. Well, I would agree with that. In, in theory, it's good. And if things break right, maybe. But I, I'd also, I'd also, he's I not starting I, as a wide receiver, too. I'm loving him. He's not beating out both Demarcus and Sammy Watkins for the wide receiver no, two role. It's just like not Sammy happening. Stay healthy. He's going to be a beast. I'm I don't sorry. Know. We'll see. We'll take a little, I think yeah, it's we'll just something to keep an eye. I think hey. he's got the explosiveness. Hey. Is that it? You know? Are we done? We'll see. Guys, we love. He's, he's got heard. One more. Okay. Yeah, because he decides to do like a million. You told uh, me let, to read let, them all off. <laughs> all right, let me finish. Let me finish them. Skirt. Pretty easy for me. Josh Jacobs. Josh Chink. Josh Jacobs. Over 1,100 yards in 13 games last year. We talked about it last summer where we weren't sure what to expect with him because he didn't have a full workload in college, but the Raiders made him a first-round pick and they showed why. Well, he showed why, and they showed their belief in him by giving him. Over 240 carries. And I think he was on pace for like 306 if he played full 16 games. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to take that. And there was reports this week that he's, they're gonna be, he's more involved in the passing game. So all of that upside, I'm, I'm taking it. I'm all in. I'm Josh Jacobs. And the last name Jacobs as a running back is phenomenal. So <laughs> double-edged sword. They have a phenomenal offensive line. Um, I, th I just think the team overall is going to be better. So he's going to see every opportunity. He's the number one guy back there. Who, who the fuck's behind him? Jalen Richard? No, you're 100 percent right. The more you know, the, the, everyone, uh, beginning of the summer, week, Josh Jacobs just keeps facts. Climbing. The more I think about, it, the more I think he's probably going to get 50 plus targets this yeah. year, and I think he's going to be big got, involved. The rushing efficiency is going to come down. It always does with these running backs, man. Which is fine. Is your offensive line good? Yes. Yeah, then you're gonna then you're gonna average 4.5 to 5.5.0 yards per carry. And Josh Jacobs was 4.8 last year. 4. The offensive 8. line is very good. He's going to get the volume. We already saw that when he was healthy. He was getting, you know, 18, 20 carries a game, get a little bit more involved in the in the air game. And listen. We're talking about a team that should just be better overall, too. I just That's think, just, yeah. Just yeah. yeah. Get a workhorse in an up-and-coming team, and, like, you're you're good to go. Josh Can't Jacobs is a no-brainer, like, back half of the first too round easy. pick. Oh, yeah. Too All fucking right. easy. Very good. Those are the guys we love. Hopefully you love them, too. Drop some comments down below about guys that you do not want to leave any of your drafts with. We will pick two draft guide winners if you comment down below, as well as follow these two fucking beautiful, beautiful souls, Whoa. my co-host of podcasts. <laughs> it's, it's good, right? There's wow. a lot of negativity in that last section. Threw, I had to threw, switch threw it up. Threw me off there. Yeah, so follow these two guys on Twitter. Make sure you comment down below uh, who are some guys you love this year, and we will give two draft guy winners away in next week's Fade the Public episode. Heard?
And the segment no one has been waiting for or asked for, but our favorite segment. We love it. Is. Nah. Bah! And we'll do a goat sound. Is that, a sheep? is that goat and sheep the same thing? Sheeps go bah. bah. But are sheep and goats the same thing almost? No. Are they no. the same goats family? Are goats are the top. They lead everything sheep follow. Come on. Don't you know this? Yeah. They're not in the same like sheep? animal family? They better not be. They kind of look similar. Uh, right? Like, I feel like well, they're the yeah. same thing. I can understand the logic of, of your thinking there. I, I get it's it. It's like a monkey and a chimpanzee. Like, did, uh, did you get it? Did you yeah, get it? See, like did sheep, you get it? Like are, they have wool and stuff, and goats don't. Like They're just goats. No. no. All right. Heard of goats. I don't know what the fuck you're looking at me for. Uneasy feelings. We're talking about stuff that like makes your stomach like drop a little bit. You get like a nervousness. There could be uh, many different ones. We're going to go over some of ours. And our man Nick is going to start it off with the G1. G1. Make sure you vote down below in the comments and tag us on Twitter who you think won the herd of goats. The G1. Number one overall pick. Uneasy feelings. Being out in open water in the ocean and not being able to touch the floor with your feet. There's a sea monster under you. There's no doubt in my mind. There's a sea monster. There's a 200-foot shark. There's a shark. There's, yeah. there's fucking something is underneath you. Some kind of mystical creature that's never been seen before is about to eat your whole fucking foot off. And it's the most uneasy feeling in the world. You hate it. Your feet start flickering, and you're like, I got to get back to fucking land. I'm not built for it. If, if I wanted to be out here, I would have been a fish. I would have been a fucking Thank fish you, if it. I was supposed to be out here. I, I'm gone. I'm max top the, of the food the chain when I'm on land. I don't. I'm no longer on right, top. Right, we're alphas. We're alphas on yeah. land. Fish, you come fucking see us on the land. We're yeah. not coming out there with uneasy water, no fucking G1 open water, no feet attached to the ground. It's beautiful. I love it. Yeah, man. very good start. G2, uh, waking up in the morning. Terrible. Stupid. I, I love it. Respectfully disagree. Really uneasy. Well, but you love your life that much that you wake up and feel great? No. I, if you do that, then you're lying to yourself. Shit, I woke up again. Yeah. Woke up. What's today going to bring? Oh, how the, how's the Lord going to fuck me in the ass today? <laughs> All these different things going in. And the worst part is when you're out partying till 3 o'clock in the morning, you have to wake up the next day. And you know, you just know you're going to be out of commission for all day long. All day long. Was that like how you felt the day after your date? I felt great. But I still had an uneasy feeling because sometimes I'm what if I get hit by a bus. You don't know what's going to happen. On an everyday daily basis you have no idea what's gonna happen so you wake up every day like freaking nervous out about the day freaking like what out. could yes. happen yes but, but didn't you out. but didn't You're you a pussy. earlier on in this podcast scott put the clip that girl was which way a really go? nice woman what did i say earlier, earlier on, on this podcast what makes life so fun is that we don't know what's gonna happen to us yo so i had a dream last night by the way it already it didn't happen obviously it was in the parking lot well, I had this dream last night that some guy was eating some girl out in the back of a pickup truck. Calm down, why are you and screaming? And he goes, big dogs gotta eat, pussy! <laughs> Bro, I 30 minutes said, ago. Oh, I never said it wasn't fun, but still, <laughs> it's still an uneasy feeling. But I'm also terrified because I don't terrified know. You don't, don't know. know what's gonna happen. I know. You have happen. no idea. I'm a, day to day I'm basis. I'm gonna wake up, I'm gonna get, up in the morning. get money. That's it. All right, well, that's trash. Uh, G3. So when you're like, Going back and forth between texts and you're texting someone, you're texting like your friend about them, and then you send the text, the wrong text to that person. Animal like accidentally sends dick pics to his family member or something. <laughs> no, that's not true. But just that feeling when you just like send it and you're like, ah, and then all of a sudden you see it, you're like, <gasps> you're like heart drops in your stomach. Like it's just, I hate it. Have I you ever it. sent a really embarrassing one before like that? You have, right? Yeah, I yeah, like I, yeah. yeah. I, I, I did one where like I fucking like was talking about the person like being dumb and I sent it to them like they're such a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and, like it's bad. It was just bad. It's yeah. like no trying um, to like talk your way out. It's just a shit show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just you start backpedaling. It just it gets ugly. It's an uneasy feeling. Uneasy feeling. Oh one. I forgot I was I had two in a row here. My bad. My bad. Oh one. Uh, looking this, this over a tall building, like anytime when you're really up high, anytime, if, like when you're up really high and you just look over at the ground and you just see like how fucking high up you are. I think I see my dad. My stomach drops. I get very nervous. Did, did you just a few minutes ago call me a pussy? Listen, you you're a pussy because you wake up. I and would you're much. I, look I over would much rather look over a building. thirty-story building and I get a little scared. I kind of like it. It's exhilarating. You're an idiot. Um, but yeah, that's a... You think a, you're going to fall? It's a very scary feeling. You're an feeling. animal. How you, you, your balance has to be good. You it's think a, you're going to fall over? It's just a scary over? feeling when you look over. You, ooh, ooh. Yeah, I respectfully disagree. I don't have a fear of heights, so that doesn't really no. get me. If that's, anything, like I was just sitting on there fucking... That's not the same. 
It, for you, it probably would have been. No, I can look over. The, I go up there. You like pull me back every time I'm on the side of the roof. Over, like, don't <laughs> do <laughs> very dangerous. Yeah, not for me. I love that shit. I love that. All right. Oh, one looking over tall buildings. Yeah. And shit. Well, you're gonna bitch about my next one, but it's this is personal for me. I get uneasy when the lights go on in a bar and it's last call. How the fuck? What, what if I'm not drunk enough? What What am I supposed to do? Go fucking home. It's two a.m. <laughs> That's okay. more like just shame. Just straight yeah. shame. <laughs> You guys want to you want to switch this up? Most, no. sh- most shameful feelings. <laughs> no, it's an. Un- I mean, it's, you're going. Yeah, that's your it's, theme it's, so an un- far. it's an uneasy feeling for me because I have to make sure if I'm going to go out that I have to get to peak drunkness. If I don't get to peak drunkness, then the night's a sham. It's a waste. I wasted all that money. So if I'm not there and they call last call and I can't get any more, I'm feeling sick to my stomach, and that's not what you want. And I don't like to go home at two a.m. Three a.m. minimum. A, a deeper issue here, but yeah, go ahead. Could be. We're not going to get into that. But yeah. Could be. Everything points to that. Yeah. Could be. Okay. O- last call. O- 03. Uh, speaking of last call, getting bombed, waking up and not being able to find either your phone or your wallet. You check your pockets. You look at the fucking desk around you. You go upstairs. You go downstairs. You check in between the couches. Shit is gone. Shit is gone. There's no more uneasy of a feeling than not having your stuff. You leave your apartment. What do you say? Phone, keys, wallet. Yeah, I do like to check. Even though I never have anything here, I always do it. Yeah, every time. Make sure make I sure got my t- nips. Make sure your titty's <laughs> still intact. Yeah, so yeah, when, when you cannot find one of those things, it is uh, a very, very, very uneasy feeling, even though it ends up usually being in your hand while you're looking for it. Oh. Uh, A1. Yeah, usually. When you are driving and a cop pulls up behind you, you could literally be going five miles an hour under the speed limit. You could have, you could be railing cocaine off of the fucking steering wheel. It doesn't matter what you're doing. The same feeling. It's uneasy as shit. You could be the most law-abiding citizen while you're Great in your movie. car. If a cop pulls up behind you, you feel like fucking Jesse James, the biggest outlaw of all time, and it is not a comfortable feeling. That is my A1. Yeah, it's uh, never a fun feeling. Um, it's also not a fun feeling when, listen, I'm sorry to all the... The thousands of ladies that watch us, but when you when you gotta go number two and you're not in your own bathroom, you're in your own home, the comfort zone for every every man, you're somewhere else. It's not not fun. You you feel weird. You're gonna stink up this person's bathroom. It's gonna. What if you clog the toilet? Then you're a piece of shit. Literally. That was a great pun. No, uh, was, you're a piece was, of shit. That wasn't bad. That was pretty good. Uh, just it, it, taking a shit in the comfort of your own home is as beautiful as it gets. So when you're not around and you got to go, let me ask you, not great. Let me ask, I guess both of you, because this is, this is actually not something like in someone else's house. It doesn't or in public. In, in public. Me, well, what's worse for you? A, one in a public or one public. in someone else's home that you know, like public, public. You can't public. Do public, public. See, here's my thing though. Because public is more disgusting, but what's more uneasy? Public. So, no, no. To me, it's somebody else's home. Public. Uh, I really especially don't care. if it's a small home. If, if it's like if it's like people all chilling in a living room and the bathroom's yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, that's different. You know, like like in your in your basement. Like when yeah, you, you can't. Get, you, if you need to take a shit in my basement, everyone knows. You, yeah. you have to hold you. But it's also knows. like one of those things where it's like you're it's your, waiting, you're in your there basement. For, no, no, like I don't well, give no, no, a no, no, shit. I under, well, that's a different story. Like I don't care Another about pun. Yeah. Don't, you don't give a shit. Yeah. I don't care about taking a shit up here. So here's where I want to get a little weird here. Um. Well, we're talking about shit, so might as well be a little weird. Like ninety. Eight percent of the time when I poop, I take my pants all the way off, like my ankles. You know what's funny? Ninety-eight percent of the time I pee, I put my pants on my ankle too. Yeah, I'm a big. I just take my public pants. bathrooms in and here. I usually walk around with my pants off. I need to go pee. I like I when I get up the stairs, pants down to the ankles, and walk straight here with the windows wide open. I don't believe you. Um, <laughs> Dude, but I, I'm not. serious. So like I'm a, I'm a no pants pooper. So like pooping a, in public is a is a problem. You're a no pants pooper. Yeah, I take my underwear and my pants all the way off. It's big. It was this all started when I got a squatty potty. Big I dog's got to poop. That's huge. I need to get one of those. Dude, you do. Oh, do, you do, have? You do. Do do. Do do. You do do. do, do, do. do. Wow, a lot all of right, good dude. puns. A lot so we're of good we're, puns. we're done talking about poop. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, please. All right, cool. It's an uneasy feeling. I like to shit at my own house. You got bike to bike. All right, back to back. A three, when. You can't sleep, but all you can do is think about how you can't sleep. Like, you're just laying in bed, and you're like, I just want to go to bed. But, like, I'm so, like, like aware that I want to go to sleep that I can't sleep. And you're just sitting there in your own head, and you're fucking going crazy, and you can't sleep. You just think about how your whole next day is going to be ruined. Yeah, and then you eventually just fall asleep, and you don't even know when it happens, which is the best part. But, like, yeah. that it, feeling before is just terrible. Isn't that so weird? That you have no idea that when you fall you're asleep. You're like, yeah, you're, you're about to go to sleep, saw, and you're like, at any this. moment, I could just be done always for the next always seven always hours, this, yeah. and I don't know yeah. when I'm going to wake back up or shit. Like, that is, that's actually a really fucking uneasy feeling, but that is a good one. Yeah, like, last night was four hours of that shit. Yeah, you're just, like, laying in your bed, like, why am I not sleeping yet? Like, I know I want to go 
I'm tired, to sleep. I'm tired of sin. I just can't go to sleep. Yeah, you're just too in your own head. So, like, that is definitely a uh, uneasy feeling. T1. It's simple. FOMO. FOMO. Dude, no one likes missing out on stuff. Whether it's going to a game, going to a party, uh, you know, a fucking show, a you're missing a new episode or something like you don't want to miss out because it sucks when everyone's talking about something and you don't know what's going on and when it, when the problem is like say like your friends go to a concert and like you couldn't go and like when the concert's going on that whole time you're just like oh fuck i want to be there like a fucking this yeah sucks. you don't want to go on instagram and see the story yeah it's just like, like yeah that. you like yeah. start getting miserable and mopey and depressed FOMO. Can't sleep. Yeah. FOMO is a big one. Big uneasy feeling. Because you're thinking about fucking <laughs> yeah, shit. Right? Yeah. Can't sleep. You fucking FOMO, FOMO. got a shit, but you're at your friend's house. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be too FOMO then. But no, that's a good one. FOMO is a good one with T1. Um, T2, this has been going on for, for a while now. When you're watching a movie like or a TV show with your family and a ridiculous sex scene comes on. <laughs> so if you watch Game of Thrones with your, your parents or, or something like that. Or you just recently watched Shameless this past weekend with your aunt, and Fiona's <laughs> getting piped out every fucking episode. It's uh, deservedly so. It, it, well, of course, absolutely. Those like fifteen to twenty seconds of it are just like the most awkward yeah. thing in the world. You like you go on your phone, you don't want to look just in case like you, your family member looks back at you and you're just like staring at it. It just it's very weird, very uncomfortable. Movie scenes, TV scenes, sex scenes with your family, not fun. Not good at all. T two. T three. Round it out, baby. So I don't know the right worded your phrasage I know what you're going for so yeah like if especially if you're in college or something right now or Mm -hmm. if you've ever been fucking young which every single one of you guys falls into this category when you write a paper and you accidentally delete it or you think you accidentally delete it you you wrote like 10 pages and then you're like (gasps) it's gone that That is no drop so uneasy and I would for my personal life with video stuff there have been times where I've recorded an entire video and I didn't record the audio or the camera wasn't on or I thought it wasn't on and it didn't have the video file or you saved it as the wrong file and it doesn't load or yes. something and you're just like, <gasps> I just did the whole thing and now I got to do it over. Yeah. If I lost the entire fucking thing, very, very, very uneasy feeling. Not Losing what you thought you just worked very, 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 very hard on. Yeah. Just good. Speaking of hard that's, on. That's a great way to uh, sum that up. Yeah. That's ridiculous what you just said. What do you mean? Speaking, Speaking of, of hard, hard on. on. <laughs> Are you in your boxies? Oh, you really, <laughs> you really put his pants. We're fucking, we're, li- fucking we're living. to the ankles crew, baby. Oh, All right, well, oh, that was, that was uh, fun. That was Heard of Ghosts. That was the show. Dana if Gordon. you liked it, please subscribe. Please comment. <laughs> Dana Gordon. <laughs> and, speak uh, for my wife's in the car. Dana Gordon. That is all. So have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you all. Make sure you subscribe to the Faith of Public YouTube and podcast. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure you go watch another video on the channel because we need the watch time numbers to go up. We love you, YouTube. Good night, New York. Look, there's probably maybe two clients that I really care about. Vinny is one of them. And if I take the job, I can put him in this movie that he wants. Dana Gordon, you're on speakerphone and my wife's in the car. Oh, uh, hi. Hello. So, how was the funeral? It was fun. So you spoke to John? Spoke to John about what? (laughs) Well, I was at that place for a decade, Ari. I know all about it. Okay, what do you want? I want to be under you. Dana, I told you, my wife's in the car. (laughs) Very funny. I want to be your number two. I know everyone there. I helped build that place. And if it weren't for Alan being such a woman-hating piece of shit, I'd still be helping. Understood. Listen, let's see how it plays out. Just asking for consideration, Ari. I'll get back to you. Bye. I'm on speaker with my wife in the car. It's common courtesy. Well, what were you afraid she was going to say, Ari? Nothing. Who is she? Nobody. She's a studio exec, a good one. In fact, she'd make a great number two. Did you fuck her?